big welcome back once again to the Humble Climb podcast. Demetri Damianos is my name, and I've got an awesome, awesome guest with me today. But before we get into it, I've got a massive shout out to our sponsors as per usual. I've got to tick them off, and I've always got them listed here, so I'll never forget them because the sponsors, they're the lifeline of this business. <laughs> Bonza Snowballs, I don't have any on us today. They were meant to drop some off, but they forgot about it. But Bonza Snowballs, amazing, amazing marshmallows. As you can tell, I've in a fair few <laughs> my time. <laughs> right, but uh, Bonds of Snowballs are amazing, so we'll get you some sent to your house. Gigi Hair and Kids, so if you ever need that nice skin fade happening, mate, I'll know where to send you if you're ever not happy with your barber. b and Car and Truck Repairs, they're just bossing it around the country and the world at the moment. I think they're in Ipswich at the moment, so kudos to them. Body Contour and Laser Clinic, if everyone knows I need a bit of contouring. <laughs> and last but not least... Barbecue Brothers Catering, Benny, you're a you're a food fan, obviously. Yeah, big foodie. Yeah, okay. So Barbecue Brothers Catering recently did an event of mine, and we're talking spits, we're talking uh, meat on the barbie, we're talking uh, chicken wings on the barbie, you name it. So incredible. So maybe down at the Hurt Locker for the Christmas party nice. function. That I'll would be you unreal. I sort you out, man. I sort you out, man. I'll put Absolutely. it out myself. But a massive, massive thank you to. Uh, everyone for continuing to be the lifeblood of this podcast. And we're always open to new sponsors and those that are coming and going, whether you stay on for two episodes or five, it's so, so appreciative. So a massive thank you. Continue to like, share and subscribe and everything else that comes with it. And let's get into today's episode. Got a, uh, and I've actually just met him today, and I don't know. I feel like we're going to be mates for a while because we're, <laughs> both, so. little, we're both a little sick. <laughs> 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 Mate, I absolutely love – I just love what this guy stands for. And I've just met him today, Benny F. And Crocker. He's a – Ex, I'm going to call him ex AFL footballer, but he's not defined by anything to do with footy. I reckon you're a bit of a. Um, would you say you're a private school wanker or a boy from the burbs? Well, I am a private school wanker. I probably don't look like one, <laughs> but we'll go in, in the mix. A burbs boy went to a private school, <laughs> Mate, literally. And I reckon I was obviously having to do a bit of research, and um, just this morning, looked at me five minutes. I'll be honest yeah. with you, but because um, I don't like to over research, because I reckon that's when you stuff it up. Like, yeah, yeah it just Keep doesn't flow exactly. Yeah, yeah, flow yeah. it naturally. Um, but if anyone that met you or anyone that saw you, I don't think you would know a clue that you are a private school boy. <laughs> yeah, <I hope> not. <laughs> <laughs> because mate, you are as different as it gets, and that's what I love about you. But you've got an amazing story, um, obviously with the whole footballing journey. But I reckon what caught my eye more was you as a person, and you see what people put out in their social media, um, and meeting you today for the first time, other than the fact that you're probably one of the best looking blokes I've had on this podcast. And I'm not <laughs> the saying- The best that, looking. Mate, and I'm, I'm being honest with you, like, I'm not just saying because you're here, but mate, those eyes, my words- <laughs> He's my, melting. My words. <laughs> but I'm not even taking the piss, but mate, uh, I can see now what chicks see. <laughs> and well, it's funny, yeah, because today, and I'm, this is no word of a lie, I went up to a few of the girls and friends of mine, and I'm like, oh, I've got this guy, Betty Crocker, on the podcast, thoughts, you know, they're like, he's high, he's fit. I'm like, yeah. Cool. Good to know. I'll keep getting, I'll keep getting those tats. <laughs> yeah. Stay away from the marshmallows. No, <laughs> Good luck, Tim. Um, but, mate, I wanted to get you on because I reckon you've got a cool story and I've seen the way that you are with your family. Um, yeah. And I've heard some pretty funny stories about you through our mutual friends as well. But <laughs> a massive welcome to the podcast, mate, and thanks so much for coming on. Nah, sweet. It's sick to be here. It's a very cool space. Mate, so it is. It's exciting. Uh, everyone will notice that we're doing it out of a studio now. We're not doing it out of a van. Ditch we'll the still, van. Mate, we'll, we'll still pop up in the van here and there just to annoy the producer yeah. with setting it all up from time to time. <laughs> yeah. um, but when guests are difficult, but uh, man, I wanted to check out this studio because it's amazing. So Roland Media, jump on them and Braden uh, does plenty for us. But man, I wanted to get onto you. Obviously, you're a, you're a Kerry schoolboy, mm. um, Kerry Baptist Grammar. Is that yeah, what they're called? Kerry Baptist Grammar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Was that scholarship or was that always? Um, uh, no, that was, I went there in year seven. Um, I'm surprised I made it all the way through. <laughs> Did a few things um, <laughs> in year seven. I think I got suspended a few times and, um, probably it was getting worse as the years were going on. And then, fuck, the school was like, Look, we don't really want you, blah, blah, blah. But, but you're good at footy. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the only thing. You're good at footy, so we'll, we'll let you stay. And then, um, miraculously, I think in year 10, I kind of turned behavior around and then was probably a little bit more normal. But yeah, finished, went to carry year seven, finished in year 12. Did you, um, did you know you were getting picked up at the end of year 12? Like, um, yeah, I guess like. Growing up, I was always kind of like in rep teams and like played Vic Metro and Oakley Chargers. And then um, heading towards the draft, I was in the AIS, which is yeah. like the Australian team. Um, and that's usually a strong indication that you'll get drafted. It doesn't always happen, but yeah, sure. usually a strong indication. Um, so ended up going pretty late. Got in a bit of trouble, I guess, my draft year. Or people thought probably thought I was a little bit loose. <laughs> Um, I mean, which I am, but like, so is every other kid. I just didn't lie about it. That was the only difference. Yeah, I love it. 
Um, so I ended up going pick 60 something, 60 or 65 to to Collingwood, which was the dream because I grew up going for Collingwood. Yeah, amazing. Um, and Staying I knew people there all well. well. Yeah, and I was only like 10 minutes away from the club. So it was it was a dream come true. It's amazing, man. Yeah, so I noticed that obviously you were there for three years and you forged amazing relationships. And Bucks was the coach back then, I think it was. Yeah, it yeah, be, I was yeah, there. Yeah. I was actually there for five. Yeah, I was right. there. I was there from twenty well twenty fifteen to the end of twenty nineteen. So amazing, four years, four years, amazing. Um, and had bucks the whole time. Bucks yeah. the whole time. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously you're growing up, I guess, with guys that obviously just won the premiership as well mm. on Saturday. Um, I saw this funny post on Insta. We'll try and get it over. But you holding Braden Maynard yeah, yeah. face that was hilarious. That was gold. Yeah. Um, but obviously some of your best mates obviously just won a yeah. flag on the weekend as well. So you've grown up seeing that other side. Yeah. Getting um. Delisted and or oh, delisted traded, probably mm. like picked up again. And then you get picked up again. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of the Vince oh, man. Oh, you're, you're fired. fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's gold. Um, and then of all places going to Adelaide. Yeah. 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 Fuck. W- was that like, was that a bit of a surprise? Um, I th- like think like when you, like I was always a fringe player, always in and out, but I mean, I thought I was good enough to still play. We just had a fucking good team and there was there was like blokes that were genuinely good at footy that were kind of playing the same positions as me. Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit kind of rocks to get delisted from Collingwood. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of knew that Adelaide were interested. Um, but fuck, you're kind of just saying, like I wanted to stay in Melbourne because I had a lot of stuff going on at home with my dad and stuff like that. Um, but they were probably the club that showed the most interest. So... Um, ended up having like a few meetings with them um, in like random cafes in Camberwell. Nice. I was like real undercover. Legacy. Yeah. I was like, guys, I don't think anyone's like, going to give a to fuck this, about me. I used to go to this one called Legacy in <laughs> yeah, Camberwell. Yeah, I don't know yeah, still, yeah, still, yeah. still there. Um, so we ended up meeting up in Camberwell um, and then I think I found out like two hours before the rookie draft that they were going to pick me up and I was actually at Collingwood watching it. That's so the boys were training and the club, the club was awesome to me. They were like, you can come back and use the gym and – and be around and stuff. So I was probably there for like three weeks. After was that getting, with the chance of maybe being picked up on a rookie list or anything? Uh, I think a little bit, um, but mostly probably not. But I think they they were just, yeah, probably thought I was um, – Good for the environment. Yeah, almost. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they were like, get the fuck out of here, yeah, <laughs> hurry yeah. up. But I, um, I ended up staying um, for about three weeks after and just doing my own training and then, yeah, watched the rookie draft at the club. Um, and then was told I had to hand my pass back in. The boys, <laughs> I was did the boys just in. get around straight away there? Yeah, it was awesome. They were actually out training, and then when they came back, none of them knew, and um, I was like, fuck, yeah, I've been picked up. So, That's so good. Yeah, man. it was sick. I ended up having lunch there and then kind of packed my shit up and left. That is awesome. Yeah. And then how long after you get picked up do you then leave that lead? Um, I think I had like maybe like five days. Yeah, okay. Um, which for me, being like a mature age recruit, it wasn't like the nerves of – what do I expect? Because I knew what was was going to happen, but it was more like fuck. I'm going to have to leave my family at a time that's really hard. Yeah. Um, and they were mostly the conversations I had with Adelaide. Was do you think you're going to be able to do it? Blah blah blah. And you know, I had to speak to my family. My mum was like, "Fuck yeah, do it. Like, this isn't a thing that you you don't do. Like, you can't leave a chance like this." So, um, yeah, I had a few meetings with them, and then I think five days later, I ended up getting on a plane and amazing. I was over there, and I was lucky enough that I got to move in with Tyson Goldsack. So. Yeah. That saves me. He he was at Port at the time. I think he was at right or Adelaide. Uh, so Tice, Tice had finished at the club two years before, maybe yeah, one right. year before, and then had gone over and um, got a job with Port Adelaide. That's right. Um, but I was quite close with Tice at Collingwood, and we used to joke about it. Um, his missus and me, Chelsea, would be like, fuck, if you get picked up by an Adelaide club, like, you're definitely living with us. Amazing. And we're like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then when it actually became a reality, I was like, well, I'm fucking living That's with awesome, you guys. So. That's so awesome. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I, I, look, obviously, I, I saw some footage like um, interactions with Nixie, the coach yeah. of Adelaide, and that. And um, it was, I don't know, it was cool to see, like, you know, and then seeing your reaction when you got your first game. <laughs> and again, I try not to make this an AFL podcast, but I want to give, I guess, a bit of context behind it all. But if anyone hasn't seen the footage of Ben Crocker <laughs> being told now, yeah. that he is going <laughs> to be getting his first game at Adelaide Crows in round two. Yeah, round and that was the two, year of COVID yeah. as well. Yeah. That was COVID yeah, year. Yeah, it was a really tough year, to be honest. That's, um, yeah, that's a shit year. Yeah, it was really tough. Like When, when I reflect back on my time there, um. Like a little bit of me is kind of like a little bit dirty at the club, um, which I mean people probably don't openly that's say, right. but like that's just the reality. I felt like I gave up a lot to go there. 
And I just felt like it probably wasn't as much understanding as what I was dealing with and and what I was giving up um, to only go there for a year. Um, But I understand at the same time, like AFL is such a brutal kind of industry, but um, there was a lot of experiences I had that were good and then there was a lot that were obviously negative. So so like, and without, I guess, um, hashing out all wounds, but I saw this thing last or over the, over, I think it was last night. I think it was um, where there was a there was a film clip, and it reminded me of that Richmond um, Triple H, you know, the hardship hero and mm. all those types of thing that Richmond did do. But it was um, introduce yourself to the LA Crows and let us know how we can help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you obviously spoke about your dad, mm. um, who um, it was amazing to see what you used to put out, what you put out about your dad. Yeah, by yeah. the way, like, yeah, mate, you had so much fun with it, yeah, and yeah. the memories are amazing, like literally amazing. But um. Uh, and then you just how you were open and said, "Hey man, like I, I'm I've got stuff going on back home. If I'm just not myself, you know, you know why? Yeah, maybe just give me some space yeah. or whatever." I thought for me, and again, it's not pissing in your pocket, mm. and I know I'm not meant to swear and all this. On oh, I'm not meant to swear. Guests can swear as much as they yeah. can, <laughs> but um, I just thought it showed so much balls. Yeah, for someone to do that of your age, I'll be honest at yeah. the time, considering that you've left your home from fam, you've left fam, you've left home being close to your family, you've got your dad going through what you guys are going through and you're living in another state. Mm. I just thought it was a vulnerable time. And obviously for you to actually come out and do that showed like, shit, man, like this kid's got balls. Yeah, I think um, like they're probably the experiences that I learned like as getting older, like at Collingwood, I actually, I kept it a secret for a long time and it was like, it was really fucking hard because I used to come to the club some days like distraught yeah. and like I was only 18, 19, 20, 21, like and like trying to navigate through that and trying to lie about things and like things I was saying weren't adding up. And um, one of the coaches at the time, Scotty Burns, was my next door neighbor for 10 years. So he actually knew my family really well. And I remember so, him. But that's when he was playing? Yeah. So yeah, I, I grew up next to him and that's why I was a Collingwood supporter. So he was literally two doors down. And I used that's to go incredible. to his house and fucking watch The Simpsons. You're and, joking. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, that's amazing. And I remember he said to me, oh, I saw um, your old man and he didn't know who I was. And I just kind of was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. He would have been joking. That was probably the light bulb moment for me. He's like, fuck, I can't keep lying about this. Um, and I think there is there is footage of it. Um, I'll try and send it to you as well of me, like, letting the boys know at Collingwood, like, I look so young in the footage, but um, just letting them know what, what was going on. And um, and then when I got to Adelaide, I was kind of like, fuck, everyone, well, I thought everyone kind of already knew, so I might as well do it again. But it was just like a weight lifted off my shoulder. I felt like I didn't have to lie about things and, and, like, the surprising thing is people are so understanding. Yeah. Um, and I feel like when you lie and, and things don't add up, that's when people start to question a little bit. So I was like, fuck, I might as well just be honest and we'll, we'll see how it goes from there. Mate, I'm not even joking. Like, I teared up watching the video of your mm. um, of your mum talking about yeah, it. Yeah, stuff did a, like that's so hard to watch. For yeah. me, personally, I like, I teared up genuinely. Like, I'm a softie yeah. by heart. <laughs> yeah, like, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a, I, I'll cry, man, I cried watching The Notebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not The Notebook, the other one, The Wedding Crasher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was a nice moment. Yeah. <laughs> no, one of them. Um, but like I cry easy, but I just was – I saw your mum and I'm a, I'm a massive, massive mummy's boy as it yeah, is. So, so I. You're, you can yeah. give a light. And I was like, man, like this woman's got like a lot on her shoulders, yeah. two two boys. But um, obviously for those that don't know, um, uh, Benny's, Benny's, old, Benny's dad – and almost your best, I'd call it your best mate probably, yeah? Yeah, um, probably, Passed yeah. away due to only onset dementia. Yeah. Um, which I've actually got a um, family member going through it at the mm. moment. Um, and seeing the transition has been... Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Like seeing that has almost been... Like you probably might agree, like there's certain things that they do which is freaking funny. Yeah. Like, that's why I kind of tried to take the humor out of some things. I think like I had this conversation with um a mate of mine the other day and he he kind of like sat me down and he was like, I know there's a lot of stuff that you never did show that yeah. would have been hard. And but he's like, but fuck, it was funny to see the stuff that you did show. And I think that was kind of my way of dealing with it. Um, because I do know people who have been through it as well. But it's so rare to have like my dad got it when he was 51. Um, and I was only in, I think I was in year 10 and 11 when he started to show signs of it. Um, and like every year something gets chipped away. So I think initially it was um, just like cognitive ability. Like yeah. he started his own business and like he lost his license and then um, a lot of his stuff was like importing, exporting. And I remember watching him like trying to tape a cardboard box and he just couldn't physically well, do yeah, it. And yeah. it was kind of like, fuck. Well, like, and at that age, you, you get angry, you don't understand. 100%. But then as the years got on, it was 
um, like his ability to walk, his speech, um, could no longer eat. Like we had to kind of blend food and stuff like that. So I think the later stages were, were the hardest for me because um, you're watching someone you love and someone who's been like, like for instance, my dad and me used to kick the footy every day after school, every day. And teachers would always be like, no wonder you're fucking failing. You don't do any work. <laughs> like I used to just go to uh, on the school um, over and just kick with my dad for like two, three hours. And like he would be kicking balls out to me, rolling them along the ground, stuff like that. And then kind of when he got sick, I kind of lost that. Like my dad didn't get to come to my AFL games and stuff like that. So there's always like when I think about it, so much positive um, that I gained out of it. But the unfortunate thing is the, the more I gained, the more he lost. Do you reckon you've um, – when you hear that word in general, now mm. like not to necessarily early onset but dementia in general, um, do you reckon that – no matter the age now, you as a person sort of attract to those people to want to help them a bit more? Yeah. I actually had a uh, a friend of mine who's at the Pies, um, Tommy Wilson, a friend of his um, who I did know, you know, know of. He actually contacted me and said that um, his dad had just been diagnosed with it and he just wanted to have a chat and I was like, fuck do I do this? Like, cause it still hurts for me to talk about, but then I'm kind of like, fuck that. Like I'm, I'm trying to think well, how them. I felt when I was going through it and I ended up catching up with him and, um, well, he's one of the, the nicest guys, but I also learned that his dad had had cancer as well and he's going through it. So there's two things. He's my age. Um, and we just spoke about, you know, things he can do to help his mom and how do you cope with that type of thing. But as I was talking, I was like, fuck, this is like semi therapeutic for me. Yeah. Um, because as much as, like, it hurts to talk about, like, I, I don't want to be the person that doesn't talk about my dad because I feel like my dad's so worthy to be spoken about. Like, all the things he did for me as a kid um, and even, like, I, like, even towards the end, like, I could just, I could see, like, glimpses of the real him trying to, yeah. like, you know, talk to me or even though he couldn't talk, like, just things he used to do that I'm like, fuck, I know he's trying to get through to me somehow. I, um, I, I saw, um, like you, you were an ambassador, I think for the, the yeah, Venture, yeah. um, foundation, I think it is. Yeah. And, um, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like a guy of his age, at least he's like, he's doing something with the mm. profile. Obviously you can only do it. I think when you're ready or you, you know that yeah. you can. Um, but I just saw it and I was like, that's awesome that, you know, it's, it's, we're making something of it because I feel like it's like, um, and again, there's nothing separates, but let's just say it's dementia or M and D or mm. breast cancer awareness or whatever it is. Unless something's been impacted for someone, that's when they'll push it. Not push it, yeah. but you know, tell they'll yeah. be like, you know, this is not just a random charity. Yeah. This is actually something that really means something to me. Yeah. Um, so I love what I saw out there. And like we're seeing so much happening right now, whether it be with mental health or whatever yeah, it is. Like this and there's so many things yeah. happening with different organizations, and everyone's always being asked to donate something, yeah. but it's like, well, I want to give something that I'm really passionate about. Yeah, and I actually really enjoyed doing it. Yeah. Um, there was like a lot, we did a few um, charity walks and the first one was around like a park near Eltham, which was massive. Like, and my mate, <laughs> I had a few mates that actually <laughs> almost went all nighters into it <laughs> and still rocked up <laughs> and were walking. And I just remember looking around and my dad walked it. My dad walked it. He was the only person I think with dementia to walk it, which was when I look at the videos, I'm like, how the fuck did he walk that? Because it was like a 4K walk uphill. He almost was practically dragged. But I remember him crossing the line. I just remember everyone standing there the and footage. clapping. And I was like, fuck. At the time, it didn't really, I didn't really process it. But when I look back at it now, I'm like, fuck. Even that for me just shows like my dad was just like the most courageous person ever. Like, I mean, he was properly sick then as well. And he ended up walking, even though someone probably dragged him like 200 meters. But that was, um, that was one of the ones we did. And then recently we did one, my dad had passed away. I think it was last year we did one. It was around the tan and like just still the people that come. And like I had people coming up to me being like, um, oh, I'm a, a massive Pies fan. And like, I'm, I'm just doing this because I remember all the stuff you went through and I'm like, fuck. That's so cool. Like that makes me feel good for becoming on board and trying to help with stu uh, stuff like this. That's so cool. Next time I do something out and I really mean it where, when the time comes, um, Humble Climb will put a thousand bucks towards yeah, um, be awesome. we'll, yeah. when that next event is. Yeah. So please let us know yeah. genuinely, mate, because I would love to get yeah. behind it as much yeah, as we can. Thank you. And uh, 
I don't know. I feel like we're becoming like a charity podcast in some ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, here's your money. Yeah, take it. <laughs> but mate, you know what? Like, I don't know, I'm a softie, so I love he- I yeah, love these yeah. things. If we can help one other person, yeah. um, so please let me yeah, take me yeah. up on that when that time no, comes, awesome. mate. Because we can get as many. Um, yeah, I'll call them as many as Greeks down there as possible. <laughs> right, get them <laughs> <Right>? down. <laughs> get them down. Um, but yeah, no, I'd love to, and that's why I wanted to touch on a little bit um, without yeah. going too much, because again, I think the legacy means more than than talking. Yeah, and dad relationships with sons. Is yeah. something like unless you unless you're a son, yeah, you you never understand the relationship with that yeah, you, I think your dad. That that's that's probably the thing that I I find hardest is I probably didn't have one as yeah. much towards the end. Like obviously when I was a kid, um, everyone loves their parents. Yeah. Like I I loved my dad, but then I probably went through a stage where I was so hate hateful towards him because yeah. I didn't know what was going on. And I couldn't comprehend that what was happening wasn't his fault. So I used to take a lot of my anger out on him. So that took a while for me to kind of process and and get over because I was actually a, a, I was a fucking horrible person to my mum and to my dad as well. So that for me hurts a little bit. But it then comes with maturity towards though. the end, yeah, as I said, like towards the end when I started to understand things a little bit better and I got a little bit older, that's when I was like, fuck, he is my, my best friend and um, I literally was doing everything and I would have done anything for him. And I, and I, and we did as a family, like we, we kept him at home the whole time. And, um, like I mentioned before, we did some, some pretty bad shit that I haven't really ever spoken about to help him. So, um, yeah, Mate, it was a ama- journey. It was a journey. It's amazing. Like, I mean, I've always spoken about on this podcast, like, you know, my relationship personally with my old man has always been a bit up and down. Mm. Um, and, um, but at the end of the day, like no matter what would happen, I'd always like he's my dad. Like yeah. I love the guy. Yeah. But we'll go through spurts of not talking. Yeah. yeah. Um, we might tell each other to get stuffed and then yeah. we don't speak for a while, but then it's like fuck, he's my dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think as kids and their relationship with parents are always gonna mm-hmm. have that. But um man, I'm a full blown mummy's boy. Mate, I'm like, but like <laughs> Big you know, mummy's see, boy. Yeah, it's so funny, yeah. So like I admit it. Like I was in yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm a mummy's boy, hundred so percent. <laughs> and I admit it, like, and I'll always love both my parents equally. Yeah. Um, equally, like no matter what, how much I like I argue yeah. more with my dad than what I do with my mum. Yeah. Um, but I'll always love them so much. Yeah. Um and for different things. And you know, when you're younger, you play on what you're gonna get. Yeah. Like mum yeah. used to be the tight ass, dad yeah. used to be the giver. So, so uh, if, to exactly go yeah, straight yeah, to dad, yeah. right? You play with what you get. Yeah. Um, but mate, that's parents, and that's what the best part about it is. And yeah. I think again, it comes in maturity now. Um, funny story that I wanted to ask you, yeah. and you can tell me if it's a fact, if it's a, if it's not true. <laughs> Did yeah. you get told of your delisting at a strip club? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the best thing was I I had been delisted, uh, but there were club. I won't name them. There were club officials at the strippers with, <laughs> with me. And I remember one person, <laughs> this is like two days after I got to this, said one person was at the strippers and whispered in my ear, you know, I love you, mate. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, fuck you. <laughs> Should have demanded a five-year contract right there. Literally just that. Yeah, so I was, I was aware of it. But I, I, yeah, I had to whisper in my ear, you know, I'll always love you, mate, from a club official. And I thought, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I'll tell you what, I yeah. heard that story during the week. Yeah. Um, and I was like. There's always mail on <laughs> things. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, mate, this is some serious yeah. Chinese whispers. Yeah. So nah. I go, you know what, I'll go straight to the source. Yeah. Wasn't far off. But, mate, yeah. with the Adelaide one, was it just more exit? Yeah, exit? I think the Adelaide one for me was probably was a little bit harder because I just think there was probably better ways to do it. Like yeah. I I obviously, 2020 was a really hard year because COVID, um, Adelaide sucked. We sucked. Like my closest game was like 40 points. Yeah. Um, so we absolutely sucked. You're in the bubble, yeah? You're in the bubble. Um, and if you got dropped, you couldn't play twos football. You just had to train. So like how do you earn your spot back? But also – my dad got really sick about mid-year, midway through the season, and my mum was calling me, like, crying a lot, which is, for me, I find I can kind of deal with my emotions, but when I see my family upset, that's when I really struggle. And I I remember one day I went into the club and my mum was calling me and she was crying and it fucking, it just broke my heart. I remember walking into the rooms, I just started bursting my eyes out and Tom Lynch walked in, Tommy Lynch, and his dad, funnily enough, lived with my dad when they were younger. Tom so, Lynch from from Adelaide Crows. No, yeah, oh, our right. dads were roommates. They were they were good mates growing up, so they lived with each other. So he obviously knew what was going on, and 
Um, I was just like, I'm done. Like, I want to go home. Like, I, I can't do this. Um, I spoke to a few people at the club and I ended up coming to the decision with officials there, Nixie and that, that um, I would stay on board just because with the travel and stuff, if you traveled, you lose two weeks quarantine. So there's a month traveling back there and forth. So that's four games gone. So we just came to the decision that I'll, I'll stay on and, and keep going um, type thing. And um, I probably thought that that was showing – good faith to the club thinking yeah, I would end, get yeah. another contract type thing because I'm giving up a lot to be here. And I understand that, you know, they gave up a lot to to pick me, but you kind of have to understand what you're coming into. Um, and then I went home and I was delisted on the phone, which I mean, I understand, you know, you, there was COVID, but my first girlfriend broke up with me on the phone. Yeah. Well, it felt like that. It felt like I was getting, I did. I got dumped on the phone and it was about two weeks before dad died. So yeah, it was just shit timing and um, just the process of going back and getting my stuff kind of was the hard thing. Like it was kind of a, a phone call and that was it. And it leaves a blight almost on like, I mean, not, not that you're going to go to Adelaide for a weekend away yeah. or anything. But well, like, it kind of does. I still joke about it. Every time I message a mate today, he said, oh, do you want to come to my 30th next week? I said, oh, I'm going to Adelaide. And he goes, that fuck old. And I said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, it's in a sense, like, I'm so glad it happened because I met like so, the boys over there and the people at the club are so good, but I just wish that they'd handled it a little bit yeah, differently. Because um, I felt like I deserved to be handled a little bit better than that. But, it, you know, it, they could think differently. It's funny. You remind me of this type of guy, and I'm not a psychologist far from, um, even though I see one myself, but you know, <laughs> different story. But um, you remind me of the type of guy that – Weirdly, you're the obviously the you're a rooster, um, but and the tats and the facade and all that type of stuff. But obviously, the marshmallow approach, mm. um, or having that marshmallow in, internally, yeah, is um, you're the loud larrikin, yeah, I'd yeah. almost can see loud larrikin entertainer. You make a yeah. fantastic auctioneer. So if you're ever looking for a job in real <laughs> estate, let TV. me know. <laughs> um, but, mate, and, and you can sort of see that you'd probably take things to heart as well, yeah. like anyone. Yeah. Um, so would that be sort of a right assumption? Yeah, I think for me, like, sometimes the way I look is probably damages me a little bit. Yeah. Um, And, like, I kind of do, like, in a weird sense of, like, Every time I go somewhere new, I think people are like, oh, fuck, this guy's going to be a bit of trouble. And like, even when I went to Adelaide, it was kind of like, you know, this is how we do things over here, blah, blah, blah. But then when people meet me, they're like, fuck, he's so you, yeah. different to what you guys would think. And even when I went to Carlton in the VFL, initially they were a bit like, oh, we don't know if we want you here, blah, blah, blah. And I just remember I got became really close with my coach, Daniel O'Keefe, and I remember him saying like, fuck, man, I've never met someone that has like changed opinions like you from what we thought our perception of you to what you actually are like yeah, so is so different um and I've always been like a freak I've always been extrovert I've always been loud um but for me the thing it like there's probably different to others is I, I do it in front of everyone yeah. I don't change like whether it's Nathan Buckley whether it's you know Bruz or Steel or whoever I, I'll do it in front of everyone no, it's good it's a bit off topic but I remember we were at Collingwood one day. This is a great story. And and Geordie was photocopying my ass <laughs> and he put me up on the photocopy on the x-ray thing and thing on the, well, who do you reckon opens the door? <laughs> Bucks. <laughs> Man, we kept doing it weirdly enough. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm, I just feel like I'm like authentic to everyone. And some people might not like that. And I can understand how sometimes it's probably a little bit inappropriate, but. Man. Yeah, that's just me. I love it. Yeah. Doing. Where did the ta- just out of curiosity, where did the tats like the th- like was it just like you started off with one then you loved them or did it Yeah, just- I think um I did start off with one. I think I got one when I was like when I was 17 or whatever. I got little ones on my ankles, but then I don't know, just be- I've always wanted to look different. Like I've always been obsessed with like weird haircuts, color- coloring my hair, earrings. Yeah. Um and I think I got tattooed yeah when I was 18 or whatever and I just kind of built up I mean obviously now I'm covered that's awesome um, but I love I love the look Same. I love looking different and like my mum my mum that says me still she's like fuck look at like look at you now like what are you doing <laughs> And I like the sad thing is I'm just nowhere near finished either. I said I wouldn't touch my face or my neck. So I got a little little bit on my neck, but I won't go anything crazy. Most, most painful spot? 
Um, I've had under my, I got my nipples done last week. What? Actual? Yeah. Ta- my actual nipples. Tattooed? Yeah. Oh, you are so Yeah. Funny, I got man. smiley faces on my nipples. <laughs> so I'll send in a photo. I got smiley face on my nipples, which wasn't that comfy. Really? No, nah, I was a stinger, but my, I got my ribs done and that was like the worst. What does your friendship with, because it's well documented that you, you three are like a little mini, not mm. rat pack, but the three of you are like just three amigos. Yeah. You... Maynard to Goey. Yeah. Like what does those sort of friendships mean to you? Yeah. So I, I knew Geordie um, from Oakley Chargers um, and I, I, yeah, instantly just kind of gelled. Yeah. So you guys um, mates from then? Yeah. We were mates from footy. And then funnily enough, I actually hated Brayden. Yeah. Okay. Brayden to me had like a little, like not a punch on, but a little argument at a party where he crashed a mate's party. Was this when you were both like before 18? Yeah, we were, we were like 17, 18. And like <laughs> I fucking hated Brayden so much, man. And he used to play for Sandringham Dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember being like um, this Maynard kid. Like he was like kind of tubby as well, like fat little, <laughs> like he was just a rat. He was an absolute rat. I remember getting drafted to Collingwood. Like I was always, I always knew I was going to be best mates with Geordie, but the friendship with Brayden grew and grew. And then, um, yeah, like the boy, Chris Tarrant was working at the club and he used to call us the mouse pack. He was like, you guys, <laughs> you're not yeah. the rat pack. He goes, mouse. you'll never, you'll never be like us. You guys are little mousies. And then that kind of grew, um, to the mouse pack and, um, fuck, we had some good times together, us three. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a, a friendship that's probably was like always going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've had some funny times together. I mean, obviously those two have shared more of the field than what I did with those yeah. um with those two. Those two and they'll continue to share the field for hopefully many more years to come. But off field was probably, you know, the, the fun we had and um got up to a bit of mischief, which was nice. I've never heard of someone that gets asked that you're not gonna get a new contract but then they're allowed to stay on and do all that type of stuff. Yeah. So it goes to show the and again it's not trying to piss in your pocket. Yeah. It's genuine. Like it goes to show yeah. the character that you are. Um, surprising Braz hasn't got more, any, any stickers himself. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> it's funny. Cause he actually used to, he used to message me like the shittest forearm tattoos and he'd be like, Oh, I'm going to get this. And I'm like, sweet man. Like go and do it. But he's got like a little things on his ribs. I don't even know what it says. Um, I don't think he'll get tatted. And then I'm pretty sure Geordie's starting to cover up now. So yeah, mate. that was probably always bound to happen. You know the thing with tattoos though? Like, so I woke up last Monday, night of the Brownlow. Yeah. When, um, when, so I woke up and I saw this photo on Instagram and look myself, I'm quite religious, right? Yeah. Or, you know, I'm not a Bible basher, but I just yeah. I like my faith personally. Yeah. Right. So I saw this picture of this, um, of this fish. Right. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go get that. I'm going to go get it done. So I literally like, was yeah. like that afternoon, I'm going to get it done. So I went and got that done. And then when I was there, I was like, oh, man, I've got my, this auntie. So I love the tattoos. I love all tats. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. like tattoos that like mean something yeah. in some way. So um, so I went and got my auntie's name written on me. Yeah. So like in Greek, which means like Auntie Maria, right? Yeah. That's it there for anyone that wants to see, right? Anyway, after that, I've got these two done, right? I'm walking around like I'm – a real heavy, right? <laughs> right, and I've got a couple of well, my sister, my mum's name, my sister's name, and all that type yeah. of stuff. But I'm like, mate, you know what? Like, this feels good. Like, yeah. This is a nice pain. Yeah. Like, I, so I booked in to go and get sort of like half done. Yep. And I'm, um, we'll probably compare or something, man. Like, I'm well, just, it's funny, man. Some it's, areas it's weird, are alright. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, some areas are okay. Some are not. I've sat through tattoos that have been like excruciating. I couldn't do the neck. That's okay. I found that okay. The areas that are really bad are like kind of under your forearms. Have I'm you under your tummy, arms. Tummy done? I've got my full full stomach done. Yeah, right. Yeah, amazing. Brayden, sorry, Brayden's calling me right that now. Is so, <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> that is awesome, um, mate. That is awesome. So I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you're crazy busy. So I can't thank you enough for coming on. Talk to me about um, what you're doing at the moment. So I'm um, when I left footy, I was kind of like unsure of what I wanted to do, but um, I've always been like heavily into fitness. Mm. Um, so I went down to a gym called Hurt Locker Richmond um, and trained with Brad Riddle, who's the owner, um, and he just smashed me a few times in the gym. And I was like, fuck, I've never really – like footy – don't get me wrong, footy's hard, but the gym aspect isn't. Things I think smash, that's yeah. – I think that's – there's massive improvement in that area. I just remember leaving like every time I left after he trained me, I was like, fuck, I'm knackered. And I would consider myself to work pretty hard physically. Um 
And then, I don't know, I just kind of went down a little bit and, and made friends with a, a few other boys and became really close with um, a bloke called Tim, Timmy McGuinness, who used to play footy as well. And um, it just kind of went from there, just started to train a few people and then, um, yeah, now fully entrenched in it. And um, we're actually in the process of trying to open one up in Burley Heads. No way. Yeah, we're trying to open one up in Queensland, which would fucking boom. So I don't know if anyone who's listening has been there, but it is one of the best gyms in Melbourne. The classes we run, you cannot compare to anywhere else. The vibe is unreal. We get like 100 people to a class on a Saturday. Yeah, right. So, yeah, there's something about working out in a like-minded community. Like when I when I look around and I see people like on their hands and knees, forehead dripping all over the mat, I'm like, fuck, I love yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is your yeah. jam. Are you um? So you doing like one on ones now and all that? Yeah, so thing? take classes and then um do one on one PTs or two on one PTs or whatever it is. So it's been a bit of a process trying to grow numbers, but um I've come to the point where I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to use my my Instagram to kind of boost, I guess, your profile a little bit, which I've found has um massively helped me. Everyone likes fitness, Amazing. in some capacity. Everyone likes fitness, whether you're a beginner, advanced, whatever you are. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Do you feel like now, like with this gym and this hurt locker, do you feel like you've um, found your passion? Yeah, I definitely still have a passion for football. Like I want to get back into development coaching type thing, but I also want to keep involved in the gym. Yeah. Um, so I'm really hoping we can get this one up in Burley, up and going, because I reckon it would absolutely boom up there. Because Queensland is something else when it comes to fitness. Like yeah. everyone works out up there. Yeah, it's different level, yeah. isn't it? Are you um – are you so you you played footy the last two years at VFL? Carl yeah, I've been at Carlton Carl since. And you were skipper this year. Yeah, so I was skipper this year and last year. Um, last year probably more of backseat. Wasn't really interested in doing it too much, but full time skipper this year. Um, and really loved it. Like really kind of took it in my stride and um, f few funny um pregame speeches and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, Obviously, imagine. I'm pretty loud and don't really think about what I'm going to say, but. Um, no, I loved it. And like the thing with VFL is like I'm considered old. Like I'm only just turned 26 and that's probably older at VFL level now. So like the experience, like I've got the experience. So yeah. the younger guys kind of looking up to you. So, um, yeah, it was awesome experience. Um, will you go around again next year? I'm kind of thinking about that. Like what I yeah. want to do. Um, cause obviously local footy kind of the offers you get yeah, money wise sure. is pretty crazy, but, um, you also like like the level that you play. Yeah, at. I'm kind of. I know some people are like dumb, but I, I like I like the professionalism of it all. Like yeah. you know the midweek recovery, the gym, the all that. Like Especially that kind of fits in with like, my like lifestyle. Park, yeah. I imagine. and that fits in with my lifestyle. So I'm still working it out, but I reckon I'll go one more year at VFL level. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, man. That's yeah. amazing. I um, we're not always finished with the humble three, which is always something that we um the like to three. the humble three. Yeah. It's, like, it's always sponsored by Bonds and Snowball, so get your marshmallows in if you can, <laughs> and I'll stop eating them. Yeah. <laughs> um, mate, so we always finish with the humble three. So it's just the same same standard questions that yep. we finish off. Next year we'll get new new humbles. Yeah. Um, so. The, what we want to do, and this is actually Dennis, one of our mutual friends, Dennis Spanos, yeah, actually, who will be very watching good man. this. Very so good we're going to try and organize, and uh, he doesn't know this yet, but we're going to try and do a, a a one of these type of setups out of vanilla upstairs. Oh, it'd be epic. We'll get probably like on the couch. Like I reckon we get myself and Dennis as hosts. Yeah. And then we chuck Crocard to go in Maynard. <laughs> On a Shit. couch, yeah. <laughs> right? And I reckon it'll be a barrel of laughs. So oh, yeah, I, I reckon very, that will be one of the funniest yeah, nights of all time. So funny. we're trying to work through that at the moment. <laughs> so Dennis is going to find out. But for anyone that's watching, by the way, if you haven't been to Vanilla Oakley, go Unreal. and check it out. It's pretty cool. Best drink. restaurant ever. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Drink. I went restaurant. and had lunch there today for the, about the 15 in a row. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, mate, it's amazing. So go, go and see. His yeah. sister's actually, Dennis's sister, have you ever met Harula? She, little small, the blonde girl. Yeah, little, yeah, yeah. His sister. Yeah. So she's coming to bingo with me tonight. Yeah. And we're Play bingo every Friday night. Yeah, I just make them bring me cakes. Mate, pack how good pack is the it? boxes of the mate, cakes. It's mate, unreal. Go check out Vanilla Oakley if you haven't had the chance. But we always finish with the humble three. First question off the, off the bat: If you weren't doing what you're doing now, let's just say footy or yeah. um of the gym, what do you think you'd be doing? I always think about that. Um, I could see you in a cafe or something. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I kind of want to get into media a little bit. Yeah, I can say that. Like. Like I was saying, you, I, I really want to go on the block. Yeah, like, let's really, make this happen. Yeah, let's make it happen. Right. I want to, I want to get on the block this year with a mate of mine. So that's, that's my goal. 
Big bad bus. So maybe you're saying in media. Yeah, big yeah. bad bus. Interior designer. Oh, big turbo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, big turbo Tommy, <laughs> shout out. Big turbo. Yeah. Um, and thanks, Amy, as well, for making this happen as yes. well. So i got to be thanks, Amy. Amy's one of my personal faves, um, as we've discussed. And um, uh, I'm moving on to the second question. So media, I reckon I could say, yeah, block for sure. Um, red carpet, those funny. You know what I could say you as well, doing Like, you know the shit questions that are brown Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, I yeah, I probably would have shit questions anyway, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> They're my normal questions. <laughs> Mate, if you could have a billboard, what would and you could and it could say whatever it wanted to say and you could place it wherever you wanted to place it, what would it say and why? Oh, billboard. Probably naked. Um smack bang on Swan Street. <laughs> or right on the intersection. Probably like a, a, a uh, like an undies modeling ad or something. Mate, it is incredible, man. I reckon yeah. you go nude, you would. Yeah, something nude on, <laughs> on Swan Street. I'd be pretty down for oh, it, I love I that, <laughs> And the last one that I asked, who's, um, and I've, I've got a funny feeling who I think you're going to say, um, we normally say outside of the family, but I think in yeah. your case it probably doesn't relate, being honest with you. Your biggest yeah. inspo? Yeah, my dad. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think... Like, as much as he, like, you know, probably wasn't trying to teach me lessons, there's lessons that he taught me that I would never have learned otherwise. Um, I think my transformation as a person from 2015 to now is dramatically different. Um, and unfortunately, that probably came at the cost of his life. But, um, yeah, I just reckon the change of me as a person in terms of how I interact with people and how I value people's, um, how I value them, um, as a person's just way different. So yeah, my uh, dad, yeah. Mate, I um I love it. And I've uh, got a feeling that this is gonna be a friendship that's gonna last a fair while now. I hope so. Um mate, it's a you're an amazing, amazing character. And I don't just say that just for taking the piss. I'm so glad to have genuinely finally met you. Um because you just, there's a lot of people in this world that are clout chasers. Yeah. And you're not one of them. You're as real as it gets. And uh the big thing that obviously as to sell said strike to me is people look on mine so they'll see photos of my sister and my mum all over the place and I'm very family orientated and I looked on yours and it was so similar yeah. and I was like fuck I like this guy yeah. Um, yeah. because again if you can't respect your family who can you respect exactly. so yeah. um, mate you're an amazing amazing young man I hope you're so proud of yourself I know the man above genuinely and I've never met obviously your dad Paul yeah. but um, would be absolutely smiling because yeah. uh, you bring a tear to my eyes as a person <laughs> and I yeah. seriously mean that um, yeah you're an incredible young man yeah you're no, an incredible man, you. young man, man, and I'm so blessed to have met you. And thank you so much for sharing your story, dude. Because you are, like, I'm joking up. <laughs> you're a really good. Nah, dude. thank you. Block twenty four. Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> you're an absolute star, mate. I can't thank you enough. As always, a massive thanks to our sponsors again for continuing to get to behind us. I'm gonna go and grab some tissues because I don't know why I'm choking up now. But anyway, <laughs> he wants a marshmallow. <laughs> 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 Mate, we're out. We'll see you guys next week. Continue to subscribe, like, and we'll go from there. Hooroo.